Hi, I'm Allie, and there's so much to love about figs. And we're gonna talk about some of the figs here on our little homestead. Some of our favorites, we're gonna talk about Breva crops, main crops, pruning, and care of figs. So you're not gonna to wanna to miss it. Okay, so this is Black Mission. Um, this is an it, this tree is over 30 years old. This was one of our first fig trees that we planted on our little homestead here, and um, this one does really good for our zone eight here. And um, one of the reasons is is it likes the heat and it loves the sun, and we have both, and it likes crappy soil, and we definitely have that. And so figs are very adaptable, adaptable to many regions and most people can grow them in their area um, down to zone five um, or you can grow them in a pot or in greenhouses. There's many choices that you can do to get a fig tree to grow in your area. Um, the good thing to do is just to check with some of your local fig growers and see what works best for them and then you can kind of pick varieties that will produce well. Some don't produce as good as others. Um, figs will do three crops. Sometimes they try to do that fourth one. We've never gotten it. So the first crop is a Breba crop. Um, and then you have a main crop that comes on two weeks after that. And then you have a second main crop. And sometimes in October, this um, some of these fig trees that we have will try to produce even a third main crop. We've never gotten that third main crop though. Um, they always get froze out, but they sure do try. Okay, so 2013, we had an unseasonably cold winter, and we got down to four degrees, and that caused all of our fig trees to completely die back, along with pomegranates and some other um, fruits that we have around here. And so you can see that we lost all of its main trunks here, and so this all had to be cut back, and luckily, though, it came back from the roots, and we ended up with some, um, some good-sized branches. Uh, they kind of grew funny, but we just accepted it so that we could actually have this fig tree because it had a really good root system built up, but we actually only got one crop off of it, and it was the second main crop. The first crop never did come around because it was so busy trying to rejuvenate itself. So, yeah, we lost some, some big guys here. Okay, so here's Celeste, another one of our varieties. I'd like to say this was my favorite, but I think I'd say that about all of them. But Celeste is another one of those really light colored fruits. It's kind of got a pinkish brown hue, and it is a smaller fruit. So the birds don't find this one as easy. Um, Cadot is definitely better for that than the Celeste is, but the fruit is just amazingly sweet on it. But this one here, it does not set a Breba crop on it. Um, they usually fall off prematurely or dry up and wither, and there's kind of a good example of it right here. There's one here, and you can see that it's just kind of a dried up guy here. And so this is all new um, growth, and that's where they're producing. So we've never had a Breba crop off of Celeste. And as far as I know, um, it just doesn't usually produce one. So the color of this, I'll get one pick. Okay, so that's the color of it, and you can see that they're a fairly small um, fruit and they kind of have that really pretty pink color on the inside. Really good, uh, Celeste is really good. So she's got some suckers down here and so we want to get those pruned up and we'll show you how to do that. Okay, so right here on the ground, there's a bunch of these little figs. Um, this is that uh, immature Breva crop that I was talking about that they just drop prematurely, but they're starting to all drop to the ground. So that's pretty common to see. So as far as pruning goes, we've got some suckers down here. And we generally prune in January, you know, in the middle of winter time is good um, on nice days. And while we do that in January, it's a good idea to come down and remove the suckers so that it doesn't kind of um, make a mess down here. It, um, opens it up a little bit. It makes picking a little bit easier. And then too, if you've got any broken branches, um, you can remove those or some that have just died back. And I've got a couple of these here that I can remove. And so it's just a good maintenance to do during the summertime, even though we're not doing a main pruning. So we're gonna just take off these suckers that are down on the bottom and we'll just remove these guys and anything that's kind of sticking out that I don't want 
Um, some people like a lot of branching come up, but I don't. I do like it to be kind of open. And so I'll just come in here and then here's a dead one here. And I'll just take it out of here and just clean it up a little bit. Just open it up. When you prune during your main season though, you always wanna prune from the bottom up. That way you can clean the bottom up. And then as you come up, you can look for crossing branches, remove any crossing branches and any that are dead, of course. Um, and then just kind of open that center up. We want it to be more open so that it gets more light in. If we don't have enough light, then the fruit doesn't ripen um, very quickly. And sometimes it just doesn't have that sweet flavor if we don't have the sun in and there on it. So I might even take some of these middle branches out so it can have a little bit more sunlight come in. But I definitely want to take any of these lower stuff that I don't want. Here's that latex that we talked about. So when you do any of this pruning, maybe you might want to wear some long sleeved um, shirts and maybe a pair of gloves if your skin gets irritated really easily. Now I can decide whether I want to remove these or not. And I think right now I'm going to go ahead and leave them because we don't want to remove too much. We don't want to shock the tree too much, um, typically. You don't want to remove more than 10% of a fig tree during its growing season um, while it's producing fruit. I think that'll do for now. Okay, this is Eve, our Kadota fig tree, and um, it produces a greenish yellow hue fruit on it, which is really cool because versus the black mission, um, black mission, the birds find it right away. And so where it's kind of that green color, yellow color, it just hides. And so any of those lighter colored figs, the birds don't find as easily. And so, yeah, when it comes on, um, we get more figs off of this one than we do the others. And here, the, you can see that there's a Breba crop on this one. So here's our old wood right here, last year's growth. And there we've got some fruit and it's gonna develop. And then here's our this year's crop. So we have our Breba crop and we have our main crop on this one. So Kadota will produce a Breba crop on this. So when we planted this, it was um, basically a gift from, from a friend of ours that she'd had this in a pot for probably eight years maybe more and it never produced anything um, she gave it plenty of light most of the time so that's one of the things when they're grown in pots um, they've got to have ample light it's just like they would outside the eight to ten hours for them to produce and it also needs lots of fertilizer when it's in a pot so when she gave it to me it never produced and so when it was in the ground for the couple, first couple of years i kind of thought she was going to be an atom because she didn't do anything and I really thought she was going to produce. And so um, the last last fall we got a harvest off of her and you can see now that we've got a little bit of the Breva crop and we've got our main crop which is really cool. So we'll have a good crop off of um, Eve from here on out. So one of the downsides to a black mission or a brown turkey is their color. Um, as you can see this right here, uh, the birds are finding these and they don't necessarily need to be on top. They'll hide in the, in the tree itself and once they start eating these, they come in and they come in ferociously and they will munch all day long. So um, that is the good thing when you have the greener color figs or um, kind of the, the lighter color anyways. These darker colors always get eaten a little bit. So um, we kind of have to pick these a little bit earlier um, so that we actually get some figs. So the figs that you find in the store are never figs that are um, tree ripened. And so they never taste as good. So you never get that full delicious flavor that you get when you grow your own figs because it's phenomenal and if you've not eaten a fresh fig you're really missing out and you really need to try growing a fig in your area there there there's no words for it they're so delicious um so anyways we're gonna pull over a fig bush over here and we will get one of these guys off 
when you pick it, you don't want to just pull. When you pull, um, you smush the fig. And so I usually just use my thumb and I push up on it, just up on the base. And then you end up with the stem and everything. Now, when you pick the perfectly ripe fig, you won't get that latex. So you can see we got a little bit of latex here and one that I picked on the other part of the tree. This one's softer and it's ready and it can even get a little bit riper. But as I said, the birds will get it. So um, this one has no latex on it. And my grandmother always said that if you were to eat a fig with its skin on it, it'll create sores in your mouth. I've never had that problem, but I'm sure that it has something to do with this latex and picking them when they're underripe. So if you can, let them ripen. If you've got birds that are coming in, maybe pick them just a little bit earlier. They're still just as good. So we make this um, honeyed uh, candy fig that is phenomenal and it takes a few days to do it but it's really worth the time and it's a good way to preserve figs through the winter time and it's just such a sweet nutritious treat and if you guys are interested we'll do another video on that put your comments below and let us know that you want to see that and we'll we'll do that video here really soon so anyways we're gonna pick some of these figs and get them ready for making our candy fig Okay, see what varieties grow in your area? Try planting a fig tree in a pot, in the ground, in a greenhouse. Just give figs a try. You won't regret it. They're delish. Mm. So good. <laughs> 